So, um, two people today is going to have a chance to join Econ Bootcamp 2.0, get mentored by myself, absolutely free. Aunt Farley asked if it's possible to succeed in Econ with 2K, with $2,000. That's, in my opinion, that's more than enough. That's, that's definitely a good starting point. Um... You know, I would usually recommend like 500 to 1,000 to really start. Uh, but if you have an extra 1,000 laying on the side, you know, it doesn't hurt to have that. You know, put that into ads. The more you put into ads, the faster you're going to get results. That's the whole point. So the more you put, the more you put into ads now, instead of spending $5 a day, you know you're going to spend... Five dollars a day for like a week, right? That's seven days. That's gonna be thirty-five dollars. If you just spend fifteen dollars a day in two days, you did seven days worth of work in two days. You get what I'm saying? So, um, the Facebook algorithm is gonna reward that for you. You spending more money, um, you're gonna get rewarded because you're gonna get that data back fast, and it's gonna be clean. You feel me? And it's gonna get, you know, it's just gonna save you more time. Let me um, let me add my boy into the group real quick, and then we'll get started with the giveaway. Drop any of your questions down below. I got gotcha. you. I I got you right here, Jose. Let me see. Boom. What's going on, y'all? What's going on with y'all? All right, let me see. Yo, funny blacks, what's good, man? We got to link up still. Addy says, what's my plan for the e-com this season? So definitely it's not a mystery, right? Like everybody knows um, the direction that dropshipping e-commerce in general is headed in is in um, just branding, right? Branding stores, you know, dropshipping is a great way to start your business, but it's not a long-term business plan, right? So um, I've ran a couple drop shipping stores, but it's really come to a point where I'm just narrowing down on one and um, I'm looking to brand it. Right. So thinking about getting warehouse space, thinking about just expanding the team, it's more it's more to it than just marketing. Right. As drop shippers, you get great at marketing, but you got to fill up those other pieces of the puzzle. That's really going to make your drop shipping store or whatever store you're running an actual brand, something that's going to, um, you know, an actual asset that you can sell in the future. So that's where things are going, man. It's just creating a personalized experience for all your customers and, and making it feel one on one. People don't like buying from Amazon simply for the reason that, you know, yeah, you could get products for cheap. You could get products coming in fast. Right. But the downside to Amazon is that they're too big and people want more personalized shopping experience. You know, when you go and shop on Amazon, it's kind of like you in and out. Like, all right, I get what I need. Amazon sends you to thank you. Oh, thanks for purchasing again. And then your order is on the way. They don't really give a fuck who you are, right? Um, it, it's more about creating personalized experiences and, and brands and really connecting with the customers, making them feel heard. So. Um, you know, just double down on the niche. And that brings me to my, my next question right here by Exuding Greatness says, how do I, how do I print from Shopify store? How do I print? Oh, how do I print labels from my Shopify store? So I'm um, pretty simple. A funny thing is I actually got a, a printer right here. I'll show you. Boom. So I use this. This is only if you're shipping from home, right? So I use this printer. It's called a Rolo. My fault, I was getting a call. But I don't know if it's backwards or not. This is the printer I use, right? It basically comes, it's like fast paced. You don't need any um, ink or anything. And it comes with like a bunch of rolls of paper. You put that in and you could print like a thousand orders in a minute. And it just prints it out. It prints it all out, all right? So you want to get you hands-on on one of those, and you should be just fine to print labels from your Shopify store. 
Um, the iOS 14 bullshit. Yeah, data could be inaccurate. Honestly speaking, I haven't really seen a big, a big problem with my reporting. Right? Facebook always been like 80, 90 percent accurate. Facebook always been like 80, 90% accurate with the reporting, right? So there's always been like 10 to 15% fall off, but um, there's some really advanced ways that you could go about it. Like Alex Becker is really good. I'm in his iron blueprint group and he goes over like how to track people from, from all across the web. I'm talking about emails to your retargeting campaigns to multiple devices. But iOS 14, I really, the only difference I've really seen in my data is the retargeting. Um, the retargeting data has been a little bit off and a little less, like the ROA is dropped on my retargeting. And I'm not sure if it's, that's just because the reporting is off or because those people in the retargeting audiences haven't been really saved. So um, not really making a big difference. I mean, if you have a solid business and you connecting with your customers, like I just talked about, they're going to find you. They're going to come back to your store. They're going to want to come back and shop with you and spend money with you. All right. Um, what are your thoughts on a new update? Just answered that. What did you do? What did I do today? How was your day? So, yeah, my brother is actually on the on the way to um, Mali right now. He's headed home. So I was just dropping him off at the airport. Just got back before that. You know, I was just hanging out with my with my girl, you know. Just chilling, honestly. Saturday is pretty much my chill day. You feel me? I'm about to go watch the UFC fight in a little bit, so I'm that's why I'm kind of rushing this. But let me get to the. Let me do the giveaway right now. We got 19 people in this live. Hopefully, one of you get a chance to walk away with it. But yeah, leave any questions. Any questions you got? Anything? It'd be drop shipping, lifestyle, whatever. Just drop them in the chat. Let me get going with this giveaway and then we'll get get the rest of those questions answered. So I got two today. I got two. So let's start with the first one. If you haven't seen this this video right here, let me flip the camera. Haven't seen this video. This is the product research method, okay? So finding winning products. And that's out there on YouTube right now. Let me do the giveaway for this. Let me just copy the link. Let's go here. I'm in this random URL picker, so y'all know there's no BS here, right? Let's get going. Paste. Filter duplicate. Okay, I'm a. Uh... Okay, let's 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 see who win. We got 20 comments. That's unique, and the winner is. Daisha Buford says, what's up, Money Mafia? Yo, shout out to Daisha. Congrats on winning the giveaway. Shoot me a DM, email, anything. Get in touch with me. You are the winner. You got a chance to be in Econ Bootcamp 2.0 absolutely free. Again, Daisha Buford. Hit me up in the DMs. Let me know. Let me know what's up. Congrats again. Let's do the second video, all right? So what we got next? What we got next? Oh, this is the, the most recent video, which was launching Facebook ads. A lot of y'all have been asking about launching Facebook ads. This is a great starting point. I got a more advanced one coming up next week. All right. And let me see this. Let's go to, go to our comment picker here. Let's see who wins this one. Boom, 21. 21 people. The winner of this one is. Look at this person. So this person just Smith Baller commented, you don't even go live. I got notifications on and everything. And I'm live right now. And where you at? You would have won, but you ain't put the hashtag money mafia in. So I'm gonna just pick another winner. Come on now. Again, we got another random one not putting money mafia in. There we go. You are the best out there. I've always admired your videos. Thanks a lot. This is by Krule. So Krule, congratulations. Congratulations. We got two winners today. So Deja Buford and Krule. 
Shouts out to y'all, man. Hit me up in the DM. Shoot me an email, whatever. Get in touch with me. What are we doing? Get in touch with me, all right? Shouts out to y'all. I got y'all. If y'all send me an email, DM, whatever. Get you in Ecom Bootcamp 2.0. Get started on your Ecom journey. I'll just wrap this up with, um, with some... Let's go with some questions here. Let's go with the remaining questions. I got about 10 minutes left on this live. If you got any questions, hit me up in the chat right now. Okay, they have a the dem they have a demo 450. Yeah, so Rolo is a great one. Funny Blacks, that's a great one. Another one. Let me show y'all this one. I haven't unboxed this one yet. I haven't unboxed this one yet. This is a Dymo. Right? Same thing. It prints out shipping labels and all that super, super quick. I actually haven't opened this one yet. So, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe for the next giveaway, I might make it the, the label printer. And then, and then we could um make that the next giveaway. But let's see. Let's see what we got here. Ways to go around being banned on Facebook. I mean, it's, it's really... Once you ban, it's really no coming back. Like it's really, the chances of coming back is really slim unless you really haven't done anything wrong. So to answer your question, the best way to go around being banned on Facebook is to not get banned. All right. So read the policies. I know it sounds corny. It's like reading the instruction manuals on a new package that you just got. It's like nobody does it, but definitely take the time to read the policies. A lot of people are just making the mistakes and not knowing. I know a real common issue is when people's um, profile information and their credit card or the billing info doesn't match up with the profile. It starts to look fishy and then the you know Facebook will automatically ban you. A lot of times it's either the product that you're selling or if you're putting out explicit type of images, right? So um, if you're putting out, if you're trying to sell bikini, for example, and, and you know, and you, you're trying to advertise it, but the people, the models wearing the bikini are like, you know, they're showing a lot of skin. That's not acceptable in Facebook's eyes. You feel me? So you might mean no harm at all, but then get banned by Facebook. Honestly, you can submit an appeal, you know, try to explain your best, the best you can, but the best way to go around it is to just create, I don't know, use like your parents or your brothers or whoever who doesn't use Facebook as much and then create an advertising account on their behalf. But just make sure you do it from a, a new IP address, do it from a new hardware device and make sure it's not connected in any way to your, to your actual profile. So you might have to go as far as using a whole new um, hardware, like uh, buy a whole new laptop type shit. And it's just, it's frustrating. So... Don't get banned in the first place. That's all I recommend. Um, and Aisha, the CEO, asks, are you familiar with high-ticket dropshipping? If you are, can you speak on it a bit? So, yeah, I am familiar with high-ticket. Yeah, one of my stores was a high-ticket store. And um, done. it did okay, right? Like So when the sales start coming in, very good, right? The margins are there. The only thing with that is with high ticket products, most of the time the product is very large or it's very heavy in weight. And that's going to that's gonna have a higher shipping cost. So because the shipping cost is higher, it's going to cut into your margins just, and you're going to have just as good as margins as if you were just drop shipping low ticket or medium ticket products. Right. So I would recommend don't do high ticket if you think that it's going to be more profitable for some reason. No, it's going to give you higher revenues, higher average order values, maybe a more valuable company in the long run if you can perfect it. But, um, you know, the same psychology it takes to, to sell a $20 product for the most part is the same psychology it takes to sell like a $600 product. Um for people who don't know what high ticket dropshipping is, it's pretty much just a more expensive product, higher ticket, maybe furniture, right? Maybe, maybe like one of the things that I've been looking at recently, this is a hint for all of y'all out there. If you're thinking about doing high ticket, 
um, look at those smart mirrors. Um, that's like a, like a new popular niche right now. And a lot of people really haven't tapped into it. But smart mirrors is a great idea for high ticket drop shipping. Um, you know, check that out. But in my opinion, it's pretty much the same when it comes to profitability. It's just different in the back end as far as like, okay, um, the asset that you're building, the, the, it's, your company will end up being more valuable and dealing with less customers, right? So you're going to have less customers to deal with because it's a higher average order. And in reverse, the negative to that is that when you get when you get like refunds or you have to issue a refund, it's going to cut into your margins a lot because of those high average order values. All right, so just something to consider if you're thinking about doing it. But I will never tell you not to do high ticket dropshipping. It's a great option. Um, MSU Ronaldo says, what's the best advice for a beginner? My best advice for any dropshipping beginner is to start. Is to just start. Stop being stuck in the the research phase and being in the, the analysis paralysis and not knowing what else, what's the next move. You're going to figure out what to do as you get going. Okay. So um, check out the video on my channel. It's called the easiest way to get started dropshipping in 2021. It's on my channel right now. I posted it last week. It pretty much outlines like four main things that you need to pay attention to as a beginner. Um, one of those being the product research, right? Very important part because it's going to set the tone for the rest of your dropshipping journey. Two is going to be the, the building of the store, right? So you want to make sure you have a store that's built to convert and, and turn visitors into customers. Four is going to be the advertising, your cold advertising. How do you get this product out into the market and get people to react to it? All right, that was three, excuse me. Four is going to be your remarketing, okay? If, you not, if you're not remarketing, retargeting or anything, you're losing out on a lot of money. And a lot of your profitability is going to come from retargeting. So make sure you do that. Set up your email campaigns, your, your email flows, all of this stuff. And you should be all set, all right? But the biggest advice, just get started, bro. Just go. Like, you should have your store open right now. You should be launching your first ad by midnight tonight. I got videos on all of that, and that's absolutely free. I'm, you don't have to be in my course to do that, okay? Yeah, there's absolutely free videos on my channel that's going to help you get started. Aunt Farrelly says, what is, the first what is the first position to outsource in your e-com biz besides customer support? That's a great question. So, okay, customer support is going to be one thing, right? I would recommend... I would, re I would recommend hiring, like the next position, it, it goes hand in hand. Depends where your business is at and what numbers you're doing, what type of scale you at. But I would recommend going with a logistics manager, okay? And that's going to help you get to a point where, where you can start thinking about branding. So if you're at that stage where you're pushing that much revenue, get a logistics person. Get somebody who can pay attention to the product who can keep count of, of what's coming in, what's going out, what's selling, you know, what's trending, and keep innovating and, and bringing new products into the ecosystem of your store. Now, um, if you at a lower scale stage and you got the customer service handed, uh, handled out already, I would recommend just getting a social media manager, right? Don't just create Facebook pages and Instagram pages and then just use them to run ads and not have a social media presence behind your brand, okay? Because then you just, again, you're missing out on so much sales that way, but you're also you're also not helping yourself get lower CPMs from Facebook because Facebook is going to reward those pages that are actually engaging and putting out content and not just running ads, all right? So get somebody to manage your social media pages or get a logistics manager to um, handle what scale you at, all right? Okay, how to maintain consistent sales when advertising? Asked by Mahomi4 underscore one. So when it comes to this, you're going to have to get real advanced with your Facebook ads. Uh, consistent sales is going to come from having a tight, a airtight sealed funnel, right? And it's going to come from having a highly optimized store and marketing campaigns. Okay, you got to do a lot of split testing. You got to do a lot of... Um, Comparisons, okay? Try out new themes. You might want to 
I got a, again, this advanced video that I'm gonna come out with for Facebook ads. I'm gonna drop it next week. It's gonna show you nine phases of split tests that you can use to optimize your store so that your conversion rates is shooting up through the roof, okay? Just 1% increases in everything, your ad, in the headline, right? In the call to action, in the offer. 1% increases in the, the um, product page, in the description, in the checkout. It's all gonna lead to 100% increases in your conversion rate, all right? So how to maintain consistent sales? At first, just make sales. Just get the sales going. Then optimize. Optimize your store, build a consistent brand, have a sealed airtight funnel by having your remarketing campaigns and your email flows set up, and you should be getting consistent sales, all right? Keep on innovating with new ads. Don't wait for your ad to get tired out by Facebook's algorithm. Make new ads so you can have more ads ready for when the um for when Facebook decides I right, your this ad is old, it's not good enough and it's not performing. You gotta keep pushing out new ads. You gotta keep optimizing all of that stuff, all right? Hope that answers your question. Good to see you. Yo, what's good, Frenchie? What's going on, bro? All right, I got a few more questions here, and then I'm going to hop off. Um, what about TikTok ads? Great question. I've been, I've been hesitant to dabble in that because I know right now it's just, it's just a trend. You feel me? And part of me hates just joining the trends because you don't really get to, I don't know, you, you don't really get to, to figure out what's going to work long term. It, it hasn't been out for so long that... I can really um, figure out what's gonna work long, like a year from now, you know? What what advertising strategy is gonna be best for two years from now? So I'm gonna hop on that, all right? I, I'm gonna keep that video. I'll definitely have a video on TikTok ads by the end of the summer, all right? I'm gonna I'm definitely dabble in that. Pinterest ads, Snapchat ads, all that stuff. But um, I haven't really touched that, I'm not gonna lie. I don't have any experience with TikTok ads just yet, all right? Uh, what's the best advice for a beginner? I think I answered that already. Can you do a YouTube video for how to not get your stores sued? All right. Yeah, I got you, bro. Um, I've been hit with a, a couple of uh, uh, DMCAs and takedown notices. So I'll talk about that in my next video, actually. It's going to be my top five dropshipping mistakes. And I was actually threatened to be sued at one point for like $150,000. So... I'm going to talk to you about that in the next video. Stay posted on the YouTube channel. All right, make sure you subscribe. When do you know when to kill a product while testing? Okay, so first things first, I look for click-through rates. Um, this question is asked by Fatty underscore Famous. Click-through rates is going to be your biggest indicator of whether your audience is showing interest or not. Okay, so I would say... It depend. It really depends. It's hard to answer this question because every product ha goes through this stage and through the testing stage differently. So, at first, okay, if you start at, if you start testing a product three days later, the click through rate is like 05 percent. Cut the ad. Forget about the product. Move on to the next one. Okay, you can give it another try. Maybe try a different ad to see if you can get the click through rates up. But if you the click through rates are not up and people are not clicking on the ad, that shows that there's a, a, a bad audience product match. So either switch the audience or switch the ad, okay? And it should work. If not, um, the next stage is gonna be like, all right, if the product is just saturated, right? If the product is just, you're getting all these visitors, um, the product pricing might not be good for you, it's not working out, the, the profitability is not there after about a week or two, just cut it and move on to your to the next. This is my thing. When you have a winner, you will know. You will feel it. All right? The numbers is just going to spike up in a crazy way to where you know, all right, this is a winning product. Okay? Your conversion rates is going to go, it's going to have like a thousand, you know, it's going to look like some crazy shit. It's good. You'll, you'll, it'll be very obvious. But aim for 1.5% click-through rates on all your products. Okay? This is across every platform. All that. All right? And you should be just fine. But definitely test the product for about, test the product for at least a week. 
okay? Or at least $200 in ad spend is how much you should um, spend to get the product tested. All right. You the GOAT, bro. Appreciate you, dog. Appreciate you. It was good, Sean. It was goody. Yo, Chuck was goody, man. Chilling, bro. Just taking notes. What's good with y'all? When you dropping the next track? Next track? I got to link up with Wavy, man. Hold on. Let me, let me add him right now. For everybody who don't know yet, I, I make music. So, I haven't dropped any tracks in a minute. I got like a whole, a whole hard drive of tracks that I just haven't touched. But you know, we're going to drop a track. Let me hit the stew like maybe in the next week. We'll drop a track by the end of this month. I got one in, I got one in the bag for y'all, all right? What's good, Sean? All right, but I'm going to cap it off there, man. Thank you all for joining. Shout out to the giveaway winners. Make sure y'all hit me up in the DMs, email, whatever. Get in touch. Claim your giveaway. Join Econ Bootcamp 2.0. All right? If you're watching this on YouTube, link is going to be in the description, everything. Stay posted on the next video. Subscribe. Watch all these other videos because they're going to get... If you just go off of my YouTube content, you will make sales. All right? So just my free content is going to get you sales. My paid content is going to take you to the next level, all right? So, yeah, appreciate all y'all, man. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going. Peace.